Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome again to the regular Center of Excellence in Migration and Global Studies webinar. Today, we will be uh, speaking to the topic of present 60 years of Nigeria migration policy. And our guest speaker is uh, a historian and uh, somebody that makes policies with practice. He is Dr. Lalekon Babatunde, a fellow peace building and evidence practitioner with the Nigeria's uh, Institute for Peace and Conflict Resolution, uh, one of the arms of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. He holds a PhD in history from the University of Zululand, South Africa. His research interests include youth and violent extremism, migration and impact evaluation. Besides consulting for United Nations Development Program, IOM, he coordinates and supervises research students for the National University of Nigeria. His writings have appeared in Peace Review, Novo Science Publishers, Journal of Transdisciplinary Peace, this, and International Journal of Development Research, among others. It is indeed a pleasure to have him speak to us uh, about this important uh, topic. Uh, Dr. Wabatwende, you have 35 minutes to present to your people. And uh, I'm not sure whether you would like to hear from your end. Kindly mute when you join us, please. Let us observe the rule. If you are not presenting, you mute. Thank you. So do you want me to continue with the slide or you'd like to, sh to share the slide at your hand? Dr. Abakende? Yes, I would like to have, yes, the control from my end, sir. Okay, let me then give you co-host. Make, make, make co-host. Yes. And I'm going to stop sharing at my hand, then you can share. Okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Go ahead. I, I'm trying to locate the, okay. Yeah, thank you, uh, Prof, for the kind introduction and uh, the opportunity to appraise Nigeria's 60-year uh, uh, migration policy. Sorry, uh, can you make it a slide? We have, uh, sure. entered as we, in the early post, independent Nigeria, uh, the policy of migration as we have it today was not like in the early post independence era. And uh, migration being a sensitive uh, area of human life, of humanity, uh, early uh, governments, both military and civilians, uh, like in, in other countries too, did not realize the development uh, potential of migration in order to bring it together as a whole. So like other countries too, Nigeria's, uh, Nigeria's approach strategy is to, you know, it was to have different uh, laws, orders, decrees, like in the, ministry, uh, the military eras, uh, decisions that were embedded into different ministries, into different uh, agencies, into different committees and being over, you know, supervised by the, uh, the foreign ministry. So that, is the that was the approach in the beginning. But in 2015, Nigeria, through the assistance of some, uh, multilateral, uh, through the uh, assistance of multilateral international organizations like uh, IOM, Nigeria had national migration policy. But however, we need to uh, look at those instruments through which Nigeria managed, uh, Nigeria you know, took decision on migration issues, be it uh, border uh, management, be it uh, internal security, uh, customs, immigration, emigration, the diaspora, uh, trafficking, and so on and so forth. So these areas were managed, but they were not coherently and comprehensively developed 
through policy. So my presentation uh, this morning now deals with the, these are the, the content of this presentation. Introduction goes the drivers of uh, Nigerian migration policy. I think it is very important for me to to locate how this what is uh, the determinants, uh, the force behind these uh, policies. Then existing national laws that are related to migration too. Before this, before 2015, where we had a, a compressive uh, policy too. Then we look at migration related instruments ratified by Nigeria, then the 2015 migration. Then what we have now, since the, uh, 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 the, the, the coming of, uh, of this present administration, that we have new visa policy, then the effectiveness in terms of to assess the, the effectiveness of these diverse uh, instruments briefly. Then there are, there are shortcomings too. Then I will reflect on this uh, uh, 60 year of nationhood in, on, on migration. Then the future of migration, too. Then I will not belabor you as a historian. You can see we uh, we write uh, a lot of things, but don't be intimidated. Uh, I will I will just briefly summarize all this uh, in, in my in my presentation now. We don't have, like I have said, that the four decades uh, until we had this in 2015, a comprehensive uh, policy of migration. Different laws, regulations, decisions were adopted by, it, uh, by the, you know, uh, the, the previous ad administrations to manage uh, migration related issues. Uh, in, the, in the beginning, in, as in our foreign policies, Africa is set as the centerpiece of Nigerian foreign policy. So this pan-Africanism dictated the approach of Nigerian government to migration. And the policy, for example, the Balewa, Tafa Balewa administration, he promoted the policy of good neighborliness in Africa. The people moved to Sub-Saharan West Africa, people moved to Central Africa, people moved up to Egypt, Middle, Middle East. So the old practice, the early post-independent uh, inherited were promoted in the, in, in, from early 60s in Nigeria. So but essentially, both the military and uh, civilian administrations recognized migration. They recognized it as a cross-cutting issues impacted and in turn, uh, and in turn affected almost uh, every sphere of human life. So then Nigeria, they, they did it in the, in, in, the, in the platform that Nigeria was a you know, sending country, is a source of migration, is a transit, especially during the, the, the existence of Nigerian airways. Nigeria was a transit for most of African uh, nationals, countries. Then Nigeria is also is a destination for migrants, particularly the labor migrants from other African countries. So this pre-colonial migration patterns of the people made the government essentially to have that kind of a laissez fear attitude to migration, that people were given the freedom to move as they wish, to move across borders, both and internationally, of mig international migration, yes. So that primarily for study spirit of African uh, hospitality. So thus it's important to locate the place of migration in the nation's external uh, relations and assess how it benefited from it, how we benefited from it. How did we bring, uh, what are the driving force, the goals uh, behind our migration decisions? And it is also important to know how these, uh, 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 the, the policies, decisions were implemented. So this is what I put in my goals on uh, slide seven. History is one of the major factors, the fundamental factor behind Nigerian decisions on migration. Fundamentally, it gets towards promoting age-long you know, migration transitions of its people. The pre-colonial Nigerian history is at the core of migration policies in the attainment of independence in 1960. Government at uh, federal state levels adopted deliberate policies of sending some Nigerians
Now, in the recognitions of the citizens' engagement in long distance trade and intergroup relations within the African uh, regions and up to Egypt. For example, the Absa traders, they were known to move as far as uh, Senegal, Gambia, Mali for uh, social economic, uh, economic and cultural uh, purposes. Then, another very important drivers, uh, a driver of uh, migration policy is the changing demography and citizens' penchant for mobility. Since independence, there they, they, they has been you know, that, that kind of a dynamism of Nigerian population, demographics, especially the youth, to have the penchant to move because of economic purposes, majorly, and to you know, move away to escape you know, violence, to escape insecurity. So to promote free movements of its huge and you know, var uh, varied uh, population in search of opportunities. Nigerians are highly mobile and skilled. Nigerians are everywhere across uh, Africa continent. Uh, it's because it's a common saying that one out of every, uh, uh, every five Africans is a Nigerian. So since migration is all about people, the government's aspirations, interests recognize that they are unrestricted but orderly uh, movements. So Nigerians interests could be better be served both at home and abroad. That is one of uh, another point. Then another very germane point is the regional interest of Nigerian government. And this came into, uh, this was expressed majorly, uh, initially uh, very well by the Obasanjo military administration. As a regional power with regional interests, both economic and political, Nigerian accepted free labor migrations in order to gain regional markets. The Obasanjo administration rallied West African heads of states and government to adopt and ratify the ECOWAS Treaty on Protocol on Free, uh, free Movement of Persons, Right of Residence and Establishment. Uh, the minister then, uh, that, that was a federal commissioner during the military, uh, Professor Omoniye Adewoye, was the, uh, the federal commissioner then of economic cooperation. He supervised my uh, master's dissertation, University of Ibadan. He told me that. He, the Nigeria, then the general uh, uh, was of the mind that oh, we, since Nigeria has these Bojuni uh, manufacturing companies, they need to create. They needed to create markets, and that is why they pursued. They initiated and rallied all the, uh, uh, rallied all the Afri uh, sub uh, regional leaders to, to 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 ratify, to introduce and ratify this protocol, uh, this treaty on free movement of persons as we have it today. So that was signed in 1979. And Obasanjo said it's just to make ECOWAS more meaningful to our people. So besides his huge population that needed to move freely in search of opportunities, Nigerian Pujot, okay, like I have said. So another very important point is humanitarian on humanitarian ground. The, in the 1960s, Nigerian got visa exceptions to some nationals from Ivory Coast, Bini, Bini Morocco, and so on and so forth. The country has played host to Cameroonian refugees, and we are still playing host to them, some of them. Another driver, uh, driving force is, uh, was the, to keep up with modern regulation and management trends, and uh, high trafficking of women and children. Then the last that I, I, I put down, I, just, I jotted, is the rapprochement of Nigeria with the international community. But, uh, when we established a relationship with organizations such as IOM, and uh, UNHCR, International Labor Migration, have shaped our migration policies and governance. So these are some of the existing uh, national laws of migration prior to when we have our national migration policy. We have our Immigration uh, Act of 1963. Uh, Nigeria Immigration Service, NIS, was pulled out, extracted from, in 1958, by the colonial government from Nigerian police in order for it to be, uh, to manage uh, issues concerning in and out, the immigration and uh, immigration of travelers, both Nigerian and for, uh, foreigners in the country. Then we have the Native Act of, uh, of 2003 that was expanded in 2005, uh, the National Directorate of Employment Act, Patri Act, Employees' Compensation Act, Child Rights Act, National Law, Drug Law Enforcement, NDLEA, as we have it, it's, it was since 1989, Labor Act, Nigerian Labor, uh, National Labor Migration Policy. Then we have the NITCOM, the Nigerians in Diaspora Commission. All these were, they were later 
you know, modify the pass through lot of processes of transformation to what we have it today. But initially, they were be, uh, they were discharged, like I said in the beginning, by various uh, by different uh, uh, agencies, uh, committees, uh, special advisors, and so on and so forth. Then we have mig uh, migration related international instruments that we signed in the in the course of this uh, our first uh, our 60 years uh, nationhood, uh, nationhood, nationhood and one of them is uh, the convention was convention number 97 of migration for employment and uh, recommendations slavery conventions uh, international convention on elimination of all forms of uh, racial uh, discrimination the 1951 geneva conventions relating to the status of refugees 1967 protocol relating to the status of refugees to the United Nations Convention Against Transnational Organized Crime, conventions concerning migration in abusive conditions, and so on and so forth. All these were all geared towards Nigeria was okay. our independence it was in 2015 after four decades of uh, independence that we not evolved and it was made possible through uh, interministerial uh, committee that was support that was support supported that was supported by IOM particularly and uh, ILO they played a very major role to develop a, this uh, comprehensive and uh, coherent policy to address the multifaceted issues of migration and create a win-win situation for both my migrants and countries of origin, transit and a destination. So the policy covers migration issues, issues like migration, the definition of migration, the policy objectives, remittances, cross-cutting social issues, border management security, uh, national security, regular movement, human rights, and organized labor migrations are all addressed. It was an all-inclusive and um, bottom-up movement. So during the uh, Yardua administration, the then foreign minister, Ojoma Dweke, introduced citizenship diplomacy and as our approach in our external relationship. And the effort was to make sure that Nigerians in diaspora were being abused. Nigerians were being maltreated outside the country. And the government felt that, yeah, they should promote human rights, the protection of Nigerians abroad. The later in that, uh, uh, the Nigeria established National Commission for Refugees, Migrants, International, uh, for Internally Displaced Persons too. The, that commission was saddled with the responsibility of managing every migration related issues in Nigeria. So far, the policy has to some degree helped to reduce the incidences of uh, irregular migration and it provided a mechanism for the protection and monitoring of the well being of Nigerians abroad. And foreign uh, migrants in an effective and cheaper means of sending remittances. So like uh, the foreign uh, direct investment by Nigerian diaspora, that was prior to the formation of uh, the establishment of uh, NITCOM. So today remittances become one of the top uh, no, three sources of foreign exchange uh, in, uh, to Nigeria. So in the later part of uh, uh, Good Luck Jonathan administration, a special assistance on uh, Nigerian diaspora was appointed to communicate with Nigerians outside the country. Now we have the new visa policy of 2020. And today, the Minister of Interior, Ralph Agurebashola, also, they also introducing. From, we have seen that Nigerian approach, Nigerian's response to migration, migration matters has been in true transformation, has been going through changes. And this depends on the person and the leader, the political leadership uh, uh, no, that really dictates. So in this visa policy, Africa is put, you know, Africa is also considered as the center of Nigerian foreign policy to promote Africa integration. So Nigeria introduced visa. So on arrival for short visits to Nigeria for holders and of persons of AU countries in 2020, perhaps to mark our 60th anniversary. So the categories include visa free, exemption, short stay, temporary residents, and permanent residents, totaling 79 visa classes. 
as compared to the previous one, which we had six. So all African travelers will be granted visas on arrival. Also, according to the minister, Ralph Abeshola, the new visa policy is said will be helpful to diaspora Nigerians by birth. Who cannot use other others to visit the country because some countries do not allow dual citizenship. But Nigerians, Nigeria allows dual citizenship by virtue of that policy. So the year of signing coincided with nation, uh, the nation signing too of after, uh, which, which is to, uh, to is gear towards promoting trade, free trade uh, among African countries. Then how as this, we all together, we put it as a policy, this migration policy in terms of their implementation, how effective has it been in the past 60 years of our nationhood? So in the last 60 years, Nigeria, Nigeria has advanced you know, you know, through you know, our social, economic, and cultural uh, aspiration, professional aspirations. The citizens, they have traveled around the world. Today, even in the United States, they are in the political uh, appoint, you know, appointment, uh, which they are discharging. And Nigerians are also sending, professionals are sending uh, remittances home. They are sending their skills, their wealth home too. Everywhere, you know, we have Nigerians. In this regard, Nigeria's cooperation with other community members has promoted African unity, brotherliness, prosperity, and people-to-people -people connectivity prior to the prior to, to the expulsion of illegal migrants in 1983 and 1984. The ECOWAS, the protocol on free movement became a global example. The, uh, the people, uh, the integration and cooperation uh, body, CARICOM in Caribbean, they followed that uh, African template, uh, West African template, the ECOWAS on free movement. So Nigeria also worked with the AU to promote orderly and humane movement of citizens, to promote regional hegemony and achieve greater integration. Nigeria used migration free movement to achieve that. That today Nigeria is a force to, record, to be reckoned with in the continent and even in the sub Africa, uh, West Africa. Then uh, elevation of uh, African uh, Nigerians at migrant suffering. A good number of illegal migrants, refugees, unsuccessful asylum seekers and xenophobic victims in Libya, lately in South Africa, in Europe, US, Lebanon and other places have been orderly evacuated through Nigeria's cooperation. So our policy uh, is being implemented in the, well in that regard through, with the assistance of this international organization. Then we, Nigeria attracted uh, foreign direct uh, investment, technical skills, like I have mentioned earlier. Then we have the shortcomings. Uh, national security threats. Today, the, the challenge of uh, insecurity that we are facing is, uh, is as a result, when you have most of these leaders, most of these uh, common response you hear is that uh, oh, the, poor, the border is poor, the, our borders are porous, and it's part of our poor management of uh, migration, of our policy. So this indi uh, indicated willingness to evaluate we have, you know, uh, 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 its own policy due to security, economic and political interests. Most common in the 80s, Nigerians have suffered from a wide, wide range of security threats due to poor, uh, these uh, poorly managed uh, borders and weak migration uh, management. Uh, Cross-border crime, smuggling, trans trafficking. There was a time the, the, car, uh, the vehicle of a, of a president was stolen to the Republic of Benin by a, a, a criminal gang, cross-border criminal uh, arm robber. Tijani, uh, Amadou Tijani, and the car was later found by the Interpol in Kutonu some weeks after. So terrorism, banditry among those were common. This challenge is mediated against national goals and their objectives. The inability to cope with mass influx of illegal immigrants and exodus of Nigerians. Over 2 million West African illegal immigrants came, mostly Ghana, Ghana, Ghanaians. They came in 19, uh, they were deported in 1983 and 1985. Ghana must go. The bag that we see today is a symbol of intolerance and exclusion. Uh, it is uh, a closure of this closure of borders and call for the postponement of the second phase. Nigeria called for the postponement. Nigeria that was the, 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 the initiator of this uh, protocol treaty was the, the one that broke the treaty, that undermined the treaty of uh, cooperation. Then they started local economy too. You know, they have been attributed then to also uh, as a result of this open border whereby the illegal migrants came into Nigeria and the fall, the fall in oil prices uh, unleashed a lot of suffering economic uh, that government had to adopt structural adjustment program during Babangida administration also became a series of concern. So that uh, interest became an hour about trust around its economic growth and political development about two to two years after it ratified that protocol. 
So the Barry administration closed the borders too, again in 2019. And part of the, uh, part of the, the, the borders were, also, were just recently in January opened. So the expulsion of foreign experts, as a result of the indigenization policy, Nigerians expelled many expat, uh, expatriate workers in critical sectors of the economy. The Pakistani Indians, I was taught by Indians and Pakistanis when I was in secondary school. And it was as a result of that, the oil boom era and the migration, uh, well, uh, the migration opportunities that the, uh, the Nigerian government uh, promoted. Also, the failure to dissuade Nigerian uh, immigrants in the 80s. The effort by Nigerian government through the Ministry of Inform Federal Ministry of Information that uh, the the actor enable uh, Lebuwa that they are, and don't check out. I'm you know man, I'm checking out. The message did not deter youth from going out. And today, ironically, those people that were you know that went out that checked out were the source of our diaspora today. Inability to uh, to mitigate policy fallout too. It's also part of our, our, our shortcomings. Lack of effective policy response to maltreatment of Nigerians migrants. Nigerians migrants were sometimes faced xenophobic attacks, uh, excessive trade tax, like in Ghana today, like uh, Nigerian traders in Ghana that were asked to pay $1 million as a, as a tax, as tax. Uh, Nigerian government has not competently, uh, compressively addressed such a uh, problem too. Government was often accused of responding arbitrarily to these threats and challenges. Then the poor migration management. There are a lot of national immigration bureaucracies. There were complaints of, uh, complaints of uh, abuses at Nigerian borders, extortion, maltreatment, issuance of fake documents. There are, but that particular problem challenge has been mitigated through the, uh, uh, the introduction of uh, technology. There are barriers and risks such as ubiquitous uh, checkpoint, tout smugglers, uh, particularly Lagos, Bad, uh, Badagri, Seme. Is, uh, access, is notorious for this uh, problem. Borders that impeded free movement of community citizens. This management of native deportation of irregular, is another, uh, of irregular migrant is another example. Then the inability of the government to respond e effectively to transhumans into Nigeria has undermined food production, security, and intergroup relations. The current farmer header crisis can be attributed to this failure and uh, is part of the national uh, security problem we, we earlier mentioned. So I reflect on, I, I'm reflecting now on this 60, 60 year migration man, uh, engagement. First, different agencies for star migration mandates vis-a-vis -vis the, the foreign ministry. Second, history and national characteristics played major role in migration policy. We have seen that Africa was the centerpiece of migration decisions to a larger extent in, uh, uh, in this 60 year uh, uh, of, of, of nation building. Then multilateral agreement of migration can be sacrificed on the platter of mass inflows of migrants, weak economic and security threats. Nigerian example, as indicated, demonstrated that, oh, multilateral agreement can go just for, for us to deport mass inflow, not to have mass inflows of migrants. Migration can influence foreign policy to assert regional leadership and market expansion. Security has to be an abatros of Nigerian migration policy as proved to be apatros of Nigerian migration policy since the independence. The closure of borders as amplified in 1983 to 85, 2005, and 2019 to 2020, 2020 is an indication that Nigeria is ready to discard multilateral agreement as indicated earlier for the protection of its economy and national security. Reactive policy, like uh, the author, this author, Sherry Todman, has said, Nigeria characterized Nigerian migration journeys. Establishment of NATIP and NATCOMs are examples. They are you know, policies put in place to react to the trend, migration trend. No comprehensive data on Nigerian immigrants and immigrants to inform policy decisions. Up to today, we have that problem of data and statistics, lack of data uh, and statistics to inform decision-making processes. Issues related to Retrogation of returning migrants, expatriate quota system, violation of immigration laws, ETC were not effectively resolved and managed until the deployment of labor migration policy in 2014. So that did not go well for a labor sending and receiving country like Nigeria. Nigeria has demonstrated propensity to sign international instruments related to migration, but not enough awareness of the obligations it assumed in terms of implement their implementation and assessment. So the what are from 
going by these uh, uh, observations, we want to look at the, after the 60 years, what can, from the knowledge, from the understanding of what we have had, had about Nigerians approach uh, to migration, what, how can we now say to be the future? What can we predict the future or what can Nigeria do in terms of recommendation? So as the COVID-19 pandemic is enforcing new normal that will make migration challenging in terms of restrictions and regulations, Nigeria should be proactive to respond to this normal and mitigate any threat that may emanate from the ever-changing trends of migration. The 2050 migration policy should be reviewed to respond to migration during and after the pandemic, as well as the 21st century international migration dynamics. Climate change is there, violent extremism is there, movement rights abuses, and so on and so forth are part of human life that, is not, that are not particular to Nigeria, but they are there to undermine any approach of any national government to migration. So with the inclusion of migration in the 2030 SDG, or in SDG 10, target seven, Nigeria needs to meet up with emerging trends, international migration uh, management. Also, as nations are more protective of their borders and citizens, Nigeria should rise up with policies and decisions to manage and protect uh, Nigerians and their interests wherever they may be. With the rising population of prolific migrants, Nigeria needs to improve migration regions so that it can protect its citizens amid the rising anti-immigrant sentiments across the world. We have populism, we have break, 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 Brexit, and so on, and right, hand, uh, right wing nationalism. And this potent dangers to anybody that is foreigner. So Nigeria's image and the way its nationals are looked upon, why traveling needs to improve. Nigeria should scale up its migration governance to address the main challenges and opportunities of today's uh, realities. With the pandemic and rising nationalism, Nigeria should place policy priorities to facilitate orderly, safe, regular, and responsible uh, migration. So in conclusion, we, uh, we, we, we have seen that in, in, the, in the presentation that in the early post independence, Nigeria adopted this kind of uh, laser fear uh, migration where citizens are left to direct the course of movement based on history. And we have had, they, the citizens have had the freedom to move, travel and outside, uh, reside outside the country. Nigeria later exploited migration strategy when it realized um, uh, migration as a development agenda. So uh, to further its national goals to assume reg uh, regional hegemony and achieve greater integration. But it did not evolve uh, a comprehensive policy until when migration was realized as a development agenda, like I've said. But given the nature and characteristics of, uh, of the past 60 years of migration policies and strategies, as well as the emerging trends in international migration, Nigeria can be said to have to face challenging future in terms of migration governance. Though a favorable outcome in migration governance, a lot has worked against its national interests in terms of security, management of migrants and immigrants and a few uh, others. One can only expect that Nigeria will strengthen its, uh, its migration governance in order to improve its foreign relations in Africa and the rest of the world. Thank you. Thank you very much. You can stop sharing, uh, Dr. Wabatunde. We thank you for that presentation on the sharing of knowledge. Uh, as I listened, uh, I was uh, taking note, and I believe others have taken note. I have uh, a number of people that would like to make comments and uh, also ask questions. But before I allow others, let me ask this simple question because I had you mentioning that, and it kind of vibrates throughout your presentation. The attempt to have a responsible migration policy. And the question is, what exactly is responsible migration? How do you contextualize it? So thank you. Uh, you, will, uh, you will answer all those, you can stop sharing. Stop sharing so that we can see other screen. Uh, okay. I will call on the former Vice Chancellor of National Open University of Nigeria. He has indicated that he would like to make a comment or question. Uh, Professor Abdallah Uba Adam, you have the floor. Thank you sir. very much. Thank you very much. Uh, it's good to be back again on the circuit and to be able to get involved with the Center for Migration and Global Studies. And I would like to thank the 
uh, presentable, at least uh, igniting a whole new cycle of webinars that will sharpen our minds. Uh, just simply take time out to also thank uh, Baba Sogolo, the grand old man, for his wonderful piece on me published uh, on media last uh, last night. So thank you very much. My my observations are, are quite a few, but I will restrict them to one uh, or two. The first is the PowerPoint itself is too wordy. I mean, it's, it's overloaded. It looks like you just picked up your the narrative paper, the prose paper that you have written, and then just simply while well, cutting it and pasting it into the slides. Uh, it distracts, it doesn't uh, highlight the main key points that, that we would like to see. Uh, it, it, it confuses, actually. I was quite frankly confused because what I see is not a PowerPoint. Well, the whole idea behind a PowerPoint is to summarize your thoughts and then lead people through it. But that's just simply a question of uh, preferences. Maybe some prefer it that way, and others uh, prefer to just simply restrict their slides to less worthy uh, presentation. But my, my main confusion is uh, I'm not really sure whether you're talking about inflow or outflow. Because at one stage, you're talking about migration policy, and you're saying in the Nigeria has a migration policy, and we give out all those lists of policies. But I have not seen any data that indicated the inflow, you know, data from uh, immigration uh, services or whoever that indicates the number of other nationals that migrated to Nigeria. Of course, there are historical data available that do not have any empirical basis of how many people, uh, how Pulani, for instance, migrated from uh, Putajolan Highlands to Nigeria, and how other people also come and settle from one place to another. I would have loved to see a much more empirical data that, that tells us this is the flow of migration. And we would like to know whether your, your, your presentation is also on about inflows or, or outflows. Because it, it seems to have so many things inside there. Uh, and, and things that were historical, deeply rooted in history, but then suddenly brought to, to forth. So at what point do we stop treating settlers as migrants? Like this Parma had a crisis. This, this is not something that is, uh, it's something that is recent, but has been going on for quite a while. So who, who are the immigrants? Are they the farmers that are immigrants? Are they the hardest that are immigrants? And if it is the hardest, and I, I suspect that it is the hardest that are considered immigrants, because they are the plan. They have been around Nigeria since about 15th century. So for how long have you had to settle in a place for you to become shorn of the soil as it were? Because if you go back into history, all of us were migrants. We all come from somewhere and, and settle here. So I, I'm not sure whether harder Pama complex indicates uh, an effective illustration of uh, failure of migration policy uh, in the country. Uh, so because of the, the hardest, whatever they are. And uh, ironically enough, not all hardest are pulling. There are a lot of people who are hardest, but they're not pulling. There's somebody who just like cattle is a, a harder. Even Baba Sogolo is a harder. I know he has a lot of uh, cattle somewhere uh, in Emepo. So uh, um, that, that's my, 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 my question. Is, uh, some of the data seem to be, I know you are a historian and you are looking at this from a historical perspective, but some of the data seem to be a little bit dated in the sense that I'm not sure whether we'll be talking about migration policy in 2021 and still referring to the 1983 expulsion of Ghanaians. Um, and also, there, there seems to be little connection between insurgency, um, uh, terrorism, and migration. Because if you are talking about uh, all these issues as, as a result of migration, what about the Niger Delta? There's a lot of uh, trouble in Niger Delta also, with that also caused by, by migrants. So in, in other words, I, I feel a little bit confused in, in the presentation. I'm not sure whether the presentation is talking about inflows of migrants or outflows of migrants, or the government policies about uh, specific government policies about migration. And uh, I would like more clarification on this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Um, Professor Sogolo, you may go ahead, sir. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, uh, first of all, I'm, I'm delighted to see uh, former uh, Vice Chancellor uh, being in this uh, platform. He promised that he will continue to uh, be attending, and I'm glad that he's here. As long as he's here, any meeting, I will make sure I'm here because I learned a lot uh, from this uh, great man. But I don't know why he's, uh, he's removed Professor from his name. He's now using Mozi. Uh, 
I know that's a Muslim uh, title. Where have you seen uh, Professor? No, Munzur, Munzur is my son, and he is using this particular computer for his online classes. Oh, OK, OK. Uh, because my all regular machine has no. Yeah, uh, Munzur is the name of my son. Uh, OK, and He's okay. using it. He's attending a course at the University of Bolton. And my all uh, regular okay. machine has no power, so I'm using it. Okay, but don't worry, okay. next time it will, like be, it. it will be me. All right. <laughs> yes, I, I had made this point on uh, in my chat. The presenter seems to uh, equate, you know, uh, migration policy with uh, uh, foreign policy. But there can be a, foreign, a country's foreign policy, which does not necessarily mean migration policy. In other words, foreign policy is a broader concept uh, than migration uh, policy. Although he's talked all through about migration policy, uh, he talked about the policy of enacted in uh, 2015. I don't know whether he called it uh, migration policy or foreign policy. I just want to be sure that he's making that clear distinction between migration policy and foreign policy. Thank you. That's all. Thank you very much, sir. I think we're taking one more, and I think a female or two female participants will be called upon. Uh, but next is uh, Dr. Oyebode. Dr. Oyebode, you can unmute and uh, make your comment. Then next will be Dr. Orie. So in that order, you can unmute yourself. Whoever is ready. It seems not to be ready. Can you unmute yourself? Professor Mande, you've been asked to unmute also. Dr. Rie, you've been asked to unmute. Uh, let me see, everybody. Dr. Everybody, you've been asked to unmute. And then Dr. Jarikri ja ja will be the last, and then the presenter can, can uh, respond. So any one of you can go first. I've asked you to unmute. Uh, hello, sir. Yes, go ahead, sir. Your comment. Well, I, I just want to observe that uh, in his paper, most of the time he's talking of the uh, Yaradu administration or Basanjwa. I think uh, it, 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 this is not a political paper. Uh, we should probably think of it as academic paper and just talk of the year rather than being specific uh, about uh, the administration that uh, made the law. Uh, it's a review over a period of time, or probably you just refer to uh, maybe second, first, third, and uh, fourth republics, uh, so that we are not seen as probably making propaganda of a certain uh, political. I don't know if I'm wrong. I want others to uh, contribute to this perspective. Which I Thank you very much. Thank you. The next person, I've also asked, uh, is it Mr. or Dr. Peter Effion? You happened to join earlier, you know, one of the first people to sign on. Comment, please. While we're waiting on that, let me apologize on behalf of the center. We mistakenly okay. sent a link for the last presentation. That, of course, imparted uh, some of us joining. So apologies. So go ahead, please. Hello, good, mo good morning. Good morning. Hello? Yes, go ahead. Am I... OK, listen, li listening carefully to the beautiful presentation by
Mm, we, we lost you. Dr. Ephraim, we, we can't hear you anymore. Okay, I guess we will allow the presenter to, to respond. Dr. Babatunde, can you respond while we await? Okay. Uh, thank you. Go ahead, sir. Yes, thank you very much, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and uh, thank you for your observations all concerning the slides. Yes, they are too verbose. Uh, I need to make it uh, succinct next time uh, for the sake of uh, bre brevity and uh, time. Uh, I will improve on that. Uh, after I said it initially that uh, as a student, we always look for words, words, words to write. So, but don't mind me for, for global audience, I will do that next time. So on the responsible uh, migration policy, yes, what I mean by responsible migration policy is when a policy is proactive and not reactive, it's very, very important for a nation to anticipate, uh, you know, given our 60 years of, in, uh, of nationhood, of nation building, then from where we are, and ability to project, I think that's the, you know, the essence of policy responses. Uh, if not, we continue to be reactive to our policies, particularly in migration. Migration is a sensitive uh, area of our lives and uh, most nations are very cautious about it. And up till when the United Nations had, uh, had uh, made IOM, the uh, global agency, there was no any agency because on migration, like we have WHO, ALO, and so on and so forth. This, uh, in 2005, a campaign was made on that. And the country that opposed it the most, that was the lead opposing it was the United States. They did not have, the, the people, the most countries do not want to have a very single uh, uh, agency play that role. So we need to have responsible uh, uh, immigration policy that will promote Humane, orderly, and germane uh, 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 migration brand, uh, of uh, Nigerian people coming into Nigeria. Oh, hello? Hello? Are you hearing me? Right. Okay, yes. On the uh, uh, Abdullah, or the inflow and outflow, yes. The inflow outflow. Yes, right? yes. Yes, we is can. A, yes, is it right. okay. hey. immigration and emigration? Yes, I mentioned the, briefly the, the inflow of labor migrants from particularly illegal migrants from uh, African countries, uh, Ghana. And I mentioned the Pakistanis, the Indians, the British, when during the oil boom of Nigeria. So uh, that locates. Then we mentioned about the transhumans. We mentioned the transhumans, and up to today, a lot of uh, explanations of this insecurity and the challenges of farmer leaders like uh, our professor has mentioned is as a result of these open porous borders that okay we have our own uh, Nigerians the indigenous the citizens but others are also coming because of these similarities the homogeneous uh, uh, characteristics so some also are so called coming from outside the border from other uh, uh, neighbor, uh, neighbor, uh, neighbor, uh, neighbor countries so this is giving all uh, this is also uh, uh, is caused in the, in, the, in, the, in the presentation. Then the migration, in 2015 migration, is called National Migration Policy of 2015. National Migration Policy of 2015. It's not Nigerian migration, it's not migration policy, it's not foreign policy, but National Migration Policy of 2015. And it can be Googled and we will see it. I was part of that process in 2015. Uh, and it was uh, headed, uh, it was supported by IOM. Then when we talk about the year, the leaders, as historians, we, the leaders, uh, we need to pinpoint uh, when we are making uh, our judgment, our assessment, when we are making reference, uh, not about the dates alone, but about leaders. We are not talking about them. We are talking about administration, Babasanjo administration, Yadu administration, Gawan administration is very, very important. And that is
Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. I think the last one will be, when do we stop becoming an immigrant despite being settled for a long time? When do we stop being seen as an outsider? Okay. It's a very sensitive issue. Yeah. Yeah. And as well, any of the policies, as any of the Nigerian policies since independence address that. No, you no, say, no, no. Uh, Omeko, <laughs> yes, are the Igbos Yes. Uh, generally, let me... Yes. Okay, go ahead. Yes. Yes, I want to just generalize it. We are all products of migration. We are where we are today as a result of migration. And migration will continue as long as we have comparison to make in terms of our conditions, in, you know, in, in terms of our physical conditions, in terms of our socioeconomic conditions and political conditions. Today, uh, Dr. Babatunde can migrate to maybe the Republic of Benin. Today, my they might migrate to Canada, but it's as a result of the need. Probably the push and the pull factors are very, very important. So, but as long, in terms of promotion of citizenship, we have it in Nigeria. Citizenship, there's citizenship policy, which uh, Nigerian government is also uh, promoting. And we have, okay, if you have stayed in a particular state for a certain period of time, yes, you can claim that particular, but in terms of, we have that policy. It's not a problem of policy. It's about a problem of implementation and implement of reacting. So we need to also promote the effective uh, uh, you know, translation, the, the, the transforming, uh, implementing policy to make it into action and that we benefit everybody. It is very, very important. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. We appreciate you for sharing with us your research and I will thank everyone that has participated. Um, is, is someone trying to say something? Let me just quickly check. I will want the grant address. Okay, there is a question posted in the chat room since we still have about two minutes. I will want the presenter, I'm quoting him now, to address the issue of future migration policy in relation to peace and security challenges. So this person is uh, asking you to look at future, since you've mentioned future policy, in terms of uh, security, in terms of peace uh, in Nigeria or any other space. Can you quickly address that? Yes, uh, yeah, as it relates to migration, it is very, very important that uh, the borders needs to be well managed. Borders in terms of people coming in, transnational uh, organized crimes are there. The proliferation of arms uh, is also there. Then, and so on and so forth. The threats are so jamming. These international uh, uh, organized crimes, that the Al-Qaeda, the ISS, and so on and so forth. So they are threats to national security. Then we, it's also, you know, in terms of migration too, it's we all a compass, uh, it, it's, it cuts across, it's embedded in different agencies and each agency is supposed to play their role you know, uh, in, in the promotion of migration issues. It is very, very important so that it is when we have this that we will be able to have uh, 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 promote peace and security in the country. Uh, it's very, very important. Then also as uh, the remittances, for example, of our diaspora is concerned. When democracies are also sent to uh, people, though they mostly are sent through informal sector and into different families, then they set up businesses, they set up uh, entrepreneurs, diasporas to promote peace and uh, uh, peace, uh, peace and uh, peace building uh, and security in the country. So all these policy, different policies of each uh, M, uh, of different MDAs, uh, even civil society, they can play a great role. In, you know, in promoting peace and security in the country. Okay, thank you very much. I, I would have that uh, a peace, a sustainable peace education will be an important ingredient or part of that policy envisage. I think we're missing that. Uh, peace education, not necessarily formal, but informal education to sensitize 
the citizenship, I mean, the citizenry and the population generally uh, should be considered. I have uh, one or two more to go. Uh, the former vice chancellor, Professor Abdallah, is raising his hand. And then uh, Dr. Uh, Orie, uh, I've asked you to unmute. So we'll go with uh, Professor Abdallah, please. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead, sir. Yes, um, I, 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 I'm surprised at the comments made by uh, the speaker on the issue of future migration. And uh, of course, it is predictable that all this issue of terrorism, Al Qaeda, ISWAS, IPWAS, or whatever they call themselves, uh, factoring into the issue of future migration. But we seem to assume that migration is about people moving. We have, we have to change our paradigms and our perception of migration. Migration is no longer migration is no longer just about people moving, but about ideas also moving. Now we don't need Al Qaeda to physically move from wherever they are to Nigeria to create a threat to future migration. They are there on the internet. They are there on WhatsApp. They are there everywhere. That's how people get radicalized because they have information to uh, they have access to information networks. So how can we regulate information networks to filter out? the issue of uh, terrorism, which we assume was outside this is not an internal factor, but an external factor. How can we figure that out? That has implications for future migration policy. Because if, if Nigeria is, is a, a hotbed for recruitment of terrorism, then that means that more and more people will be engaged in terrorist acts, not necessarily because of contact, physical contact, was terrorists, but simply because of ideological contact through information networks. So you need to factor in, uh, you know, information networks as gateways to ideological migration that also has implications for future migration policy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The last person will be Mr. Sam Egege. I've asked you to unmute. You can go ahead and ask your question. Okay, Dr. Orie, you are, you are there. Dr. Orie, go first, and then Mr. Sam. Good morning, okay. sir. And good, good morning, 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 presenter, and everyone, all professors and all protocols of that. I just want to quickly uh, say that my observation is that he did not dis differentiate between the policies and the laws. He discussed the policies, and then he discussed the laws, and then other quick, uh, policies together without telling, uh, letting us realize that both of them will have two different legal imports or implications. Which ones, uh, uh, his topic seems to be addressing the policies, migration policies in Nigeria. So he, I don't know how he stands with the laws that he, he uh, I'm expecting to uh, have seen a nexus or how he's able to link the policies with the laws if he wants to discuss the laws. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Sam, briefly. Good morning. Morning, sir. Go ahead. We can hear you. Yes, sir. I want to ask the presenter about internal migration in Nigeria. Do we have any internal migration policy in Nigeria? Because uh, looking at uh, within Nigeria, maybe like a uh, the east to the north, those migrating from the north to the southeast or southwest, there seems to be um, there seems to be no coherent uh, policy coordinating migration in Nigeria. Some, sometimes you see that it is difficult for you to enjoy uh, to enjoy most of the privileges uh, those you migrated to their place in choice. Any internal migration policy in Nigeria. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think what he is trying to tell us is that uh, at what point do you become an indigent where you migrated, say for instance, from Sokoto to Lagos? or from Abia to Kano, 
can you benefit from the scholarship? And this is a real time situation. I remember serving for two years on the indigenship verification uh, between 89, I think three years, between 89 and uh, 92 or so at Lagos State University. And uh, I was challenged vigorously because most of the Ineka, one for uh, whatever name that is not really Lagos, were being approved. And they would look at who, who approved these people to be given Bostry and his Tijani. And I said, well, I have an instrument. Birth certificate is written anywhere from Lagos. The poor young lady or boy went to school in Lagos, primary school, secondary school. The father or the parents, they have properties. Those are the things you want me to check. And they are all verified, genuine. And as such, I see those people as what? Lagosians. But I can tell you that on the third year, they kicked me out. Because <laughs> I was getting, <laughs> I was an aberration to, you know, the indigenous uh, that was, you know, being uh, implemented which I think is also an aberration of the laws guiding, you know, uh, such uh, like just that Mr. Gege is talking about. Can you quickly respond in one minute so that we can round up? Yes, thank you thank very you. much. Yes, uh, to the uh, Dr. Orie. Yes, uh, that uh, categorically, I did not uh, differentiate between uh, policy and law. Yes. I said that migration policy, but most of these migration issues, related issues, right from the independence, post-independence, they were being done through laws, you know, decrees, orders in different committees and so on, and treaties with so on. So we do not have what we call policy as a war today. So it, de you know, it determined our external relations with people and the overall, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs were in charge. So the doctrine, the, 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 the strategy, uh, the focus of the of, of 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 Nigeria since then has been the Africa as the centerpiece, the Pan-Africanism as the centerpiece of our foreign policy. So this migration policy, as we have it today, was not there in the beginning of most part, even most part of our uh, nation building. But this rose. Uh, it's not that it, it wasn't that as if these things were not done. They were carried out to achieve certain purpose. And migration is a cross-cutting issue. It comes across borders, national security and people and everything. So these were the instrument, different instrument they used. So, but it was in 2015, we now have a policy, national migration policy in 2015, as we have it today. Thank you. Then in the, in the in internal migration, yes, we have internal migration, but there is no, I am not, uh, I'm not aware of a, a policy on internal uh, migration, but there are some studies that have been done on migration. And I have done a study on uh, how people migrate, uh, migrate to Abuja uh, from different parts, internal migration, internal migrant to Abuja. And uh, I will also share it with the center uh, uh, very, uh, much later with, uh, with the audience. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Abatunde. I would like to thank each and every one of you for again, investing in this uh, center through your participation. I believe we've uh, been enriched by the presentation. I have learned one or two things and uh, we're looking forward to your future participation and uh, we really appreciate you. Please let me use this opportunity again to thank the former vice chancellor for having the vision and continuing to support us through his participation. Uh, also the uh, new vice chancellor for his support and the uh, uh, support thus far. Uh, to all of you, I, on behalf of the center, appreciate you. I never knew I'd be able to anchor this today. A few of you that prayed for me uh, should be surprised that I'm even speaking. Uh, you know, but that will be off, off, off record because we are recording. But I thank God for I'm able to, to do this. And uh, please let us know if you have not received your journal, copy of the, uh, the first volume. Uh, it is free. 
It is third fund uh, paid for. And again, we thank the former vice councillor for educating us on that. We were thinking of selling it. <laughs> and he told us, no, that is not his third fund. <laughs> That's what has paid. And then you can check them. So please let us know, please. Apologies if you have not received yours. For all the centre directors, you were supposed to receive uh, through the University Liberian, but if you have not, let us know. Uh, again, thank you very much, and God bless you. God speak. Thank, thank you. you thank you.